tell you a little something about the Palm Royale? It's a nightmare. And that's all thanks to you. Something like that. Something fun. Snappy. Yep. Good. A satirical comedy about a despotic leader played by Kate Winslet. And all the latest from Europe's biggest TV festival, Series Mania. Thanks for joining us for our look at what to watch on the small screen with our critic, Deep Tika Laurent. Hello. Hi. Thank you for joining us. Now, let's start with a 1960s high society dramedy starring Christian Wig um, called Palm Royale. Yeah, that's right. Palm Royale is out on Apple TV Plus this month. Christian Wig is uh, Maxine Simmons, a shameless grifter trying to gain access to a Palm Beach high society club in the 1960s. Uh, it's loosely based on a book by Juliet McDaniel called Mr. and Mrs. American Pie. It's got an incredible cast. You have Alison Janney as this snooty queen bee, Leslie Bibb, the newcomer who's stealing all the attention, and legendary Carol Burnett, who is this comatose former queen bee. Rounding up the cast is uh, Ricky Martin as the club's bartender and Kaya Gerber as Mitzi, Maxine's manicurist and confidant. Um, I spoke to the cast via a uh, press junket online, Eve. Take a look. I lived at that time. <laughs> I mean, I'm that old. So uh, I, it was just a, a kind of a throwback to when I was a little bit younger. And uh, I remember we wearing some of those, th those clothes. How did you get past security? I came in the back. There are no doors on the back of the Pomeroy. <laughs> I never said I used the door. There's something to be said about that time period, but specifically Palm Beach, because nowhere else in the world did it look like that at that time. It was very specific. It had its own style and interior design and and society rules. It was just its own like country. We don't know you. I'm Maxine Delcourt. But I already knew the Palm Royale. The most exclusive club in the world was where I belonged. Evelyn, you are the woman to know in Palm Beach. I don't like you, Maxine. You're very good at making things awkward. I love fashion, so to see <laughs> the differences between like what we were wearing as the bookstore crew, like the earth tones, the browns and the burgundies, versus the high society women in the pastels and like the heels and all of the makeup was just so exciting, even down to the set pieces. There were moments on, on set where in the office that we have, there was a number two pencil from 1969, like little details that people will never see, just made it even more rich and made it easier for us to like fall into this time period, which was really exciting. I don't concern myself with the shenanigans of vapid poons. What is Evelyn wearing? Sleeves. <laughs> you know anything about rich people? I parked on the lawn. Take me another martini, and then let's play doctor. It looks delightful, <laughs> is it? It is. I can't give much away, unfortunately, Eve, because there is an embargo at the time of filming this show. But uh, the sets, as you see there, are totally sumptuous, plunging us into this very specific 1960s Palm Beach world. It's opulent, the hair, the, the costumes. Uh, Josh Lucas, who I interviewed, um, also explained that uh, the costumes were sourced from original luxury fabrics from the 1960s. So there's meticulous attention to detail. And as Amber mentioned there as well, the, co the, the costumes also reflect reflect the sort of um, dichotomy between these two worlds, this high society, but also this feminist club who are um, uh, who want to uh, uh, fight for women's rights. So it tackles a lot of important themes at the time. Above all, it's really fun. Uh, everyone has a secret in Palm Royale, and you love being taken on this very entertaining, visually amazing, but also soapy ride. OK, and that's on Apple TV+. Plus. Yes, that's right. OK, can't wait to watch it. Our next show um, also looks delightful, stars Kate Winslet. She plays the comically despotic leader of a small nation in The Regime. That's the name of the series. It's out on HBO. Yeah, The Regime is a brainchild of British director Sir Stephen Frears, who's, of course, who was behind movies like Dangerous Liaisons and High Fidelity. Kate Winslet plays Eleanor Vernon. She's 
this self-deluding coddled chancellor of this small central uh, European nation whose name we never find out. She treats everyone with contempt, including her own husband, who's played rather elegantly by French actor Guillaume Gallienne, who you might remember as Pierre Berger from the film Yves Saint Laurent. All of this changes, though, when this um, mysterious Rasputin-like newcomer Herbert Zubak, who's played by Belgian actor uh, Matthias Schoenhatz, becomes her right-hand man. Uh, Hugh Grant also stars in the show as Edward Keplinger, who's uh, uh, Elena's uh, political rival. Uh, it's it's uh, got a great casting. Okay, well, it certainly sounds fun. Let's take a look at the regime. Elena and Zubak, they're kindred spirits in some way. However dysfunctional their relationship is, I think it's probably one of the only places he truly felt safe and motivated to live with a purpose. I'd like to see her. Is she expecting you? I'm her husband. Is she expecting you? It has brilliant humor and profoundly silly comedy that made me laugh a lot. Love this Kingfisher Blue. I'll try not to get blood on it. But equally moments of terror and moments that are very emotional. It is time to show America and the world precisely what we are worth. Hugh Grant playing some great things uh, yeah. <laughs> at the moment, like the Oompa Loompa. Um, it certainly has the overtop feeling of succession. What are your thoughts? Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, Kate Winslet uh, sort of incorporates elements of different shows. At least that's what the feeling I get. There's also elements of Julia Louis-Dreyfus's narcissistic Selena Meyer from uh, Veep. Uh, but there's also the power struggles drama of succession. It could also well be a spoof of Vladimir Putin or Donald Trump or Viktor Orban or all of them. Uh, the series hinges on this, as you saw in that in that video there, this intimate, almost telepathic relationship between Winslet and Sean hats and they have great chemistry and you really get this feeling that both of them are outsiders in this world and uh, kind of don't really fit in. It's also wildly over the top. There's like scenes where he has to follow her around with a device to check humidity levels. Uh, she also very bizarrely taunts her father's corpse, which is kept in a glass box in the in palace. It's, it's very weird. Um, it's also, uh, the location was uh, interesting. It was shot in uh, Austria, in, in sumptuous palaces in Austria and Liechtenstein to reflect that opulence of this uh of this uh, this small country. Ultimately, what I like about it is also what I think is is one of its flaws. It's extremely complex in its satire. Uh, still, it's very fresh. It's subversive. I think it's definitely worth checking out. It certainly sounds different. Um, next to a major event for the television industry, series um, TV fest series mania TV festival in Lille. It kicks off this week with an eclectic lineup um, of shows in and out of competition. Tell us a bit more. Well, it started, Eve, with a little controversy. Uh, Deadline reported, uh, the website Deadline reported that for the first time in, in Siri, Series Mania's history, there'll be no Israeli show uh, featuring in competition. And uh, according to Deadline, Lawrence Hertzberg, who's the festival organizer, said when uh, unveiling the shows in competition last month that due to the war in Gaza, many ongoing projects in Israel were halted and it made it impossible for the festival to include any Israeli shows. And Israeli media reported that, well, there had been uh, Israeli productions that had been submitted for consideration. So then the organizers had to say, well, they didn't pass the selection process and that's uh, that, that's why uh, they weren't selected. There was a little bit of controversy uh, in, the, in the past few months. Okay, sensitive times. And the festival opens with a hotly anticipated Netflix series and possibly the most expensive ever. Yeah, that's according to some reports. This show called Three Body Problem. It's a Netflix blockbuster sci-fi series from the showrunners of Game of Thrones. Uh, so big names attached to this one. It's based on the hugely popular trilogy of the same name by Lu Cixin, a, a Chinese a writer who was a former power plant engineer. It It's a very complex pitch. It follows... Physicists facing a cult who want aliens to take over Earth. Uh, it deals with very uh, complex uh, scientific concepts. Some of the storylines take place uh, 18 million years in the future. Others are in the 1960s. So it's a monumental task developing this show for TV and a mammoth cost, as you mentioned, Eve. $20 uh, million uh, dollars per episode, reportedly, for the eight-episode first season, which would make it the highest per episode cost of any new Netflix show. Okay, well, that definitely sounds like it's one for the intellectuals of you <laughs> out there watching. And take us to the international shows in competition. Well, I'm really looking forward to this one, Hotel Cocaine uh, from Narcos.
Narcos creator Chris Brancato. He'll be there at Series Mania uh, along with the cast to present uh, the world premiere of the show. It's a story of Roman Comte, a uh, Cuban exile who runs a mutiny hotel, taking us deep into the coke-fueled Miami nights of 1970s and 80s. History is really uh, very popular right now uh, in television. I'm also looking forward to House of God's Eve. It's an Australian drama um, with a different pitch about uh, the head cleric of a mosque who's harboring a secret that could threaten to unravel all his power within his uh, community. Well, let's talk about um, the French competition. The series Eureka stands out. That's created by the French hip-hop artist Booba about the French banlieue suburbs. Yeah, that's right. The suburbs in 2005 when there were uh, massive riots. One family uh, takes over the cannabis trade and the youngest son, Driss, has to run that family business. And then this sort of cat and mouse chase begins with him and William, who's a young, equally ambitious police officer. You also have uh, a machine which sees a French rapper, uh, actor Joey Starr, uh, starring as a former drug addict who teams up with a kung fu heroine to lead a workers' revolt in a French factory. It's described as, I quote, when Kill Bill meets Karl Marx. So that's interesting. <laughs> um, and the, uh, there's also a Taiwanese drama I'm looking forward to called Three Tears in Borneo. Uh, it's a World War II drama about uh, three brothers recruited by the Japanese army to uh, guard uh, prisoners of war. It's a story of about a loss of innocence. I think it's nice to see series from a very different front of uh, the Second World War as well. OK, well, just before we go, Guy Ritchie is adapting his 2019 um, film The Gentleman into a series, which is out on Netflix this month. Yeah, it's not a sequel. It's a series, a uh, new story inspired by his own 2019 film. This series stars Theo James, who you'll recognize from the second, se uh, second season of The White Lotus, who's Eddie. He's learned that he's just been chosen to inherit his uh, family's sprawling estate, which in fact is a marijuana business that's uh, growing underneath the house. His attempts to run the family business see him getting sucked into Britain's uh, criminal underworld. Generally, I think you'll love it if you love Guy Ritchie movies. His, it's got his style stamped all over it. It's chaotic, it's fun, it's grossly violent, uh, fast-paced and all of that. OK, well, Dipti, thank you so much. We're going to leave you um, for, with a look at the family crime comedy, The Gentleman, out on Netflix this month. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Welcome to the jungle. Lapsang Su Chong.